after we are done with joint uh, F, we are going to consider the next joint, that is uh, joint D. I have already drawn it here, and those are the members that it have. Now, resolving the forces uh, vertically and applying this principle of summation of all the vertical forces to be equal to zero, we are going to have the, the following. This is uh, F5, because that is our member F5, though we found that uh, the force F5 is zero. Therefore, we are going to have F5 multiplied by the sine of this angle theta plus F7 multiplied by the sine of the angle of, uh, that is a sine theta, that is the sine of this angle, that is going to be equal to zero. Now, F5 is zero plus F7 sine theta, F7 sine theta, that is equal to zero. Therefore, when you take um, um, zero divided by sine uh, beta, that is going to be zero. Therefore, the value of the force F7 is also going to be zero. Good. After that, we resolve the forces horizontally. Therefore, Dissolving the forces horizontally, forces horizontally, and applying this principle of summation of all the horizontal forces B equal to zero. We are going to have uh, this F4 and this F8 being equal because they are acting, uh, both of them are the compressive uh, forces, that is, they are compressing joint D. They are acting in the opposite direction and therefore those two forces are going to be equal therefore f4 is equal to f8 and that is equal to 8 kilo newtons this horizontal force 8 kilo newtons good so that is the value of uh, f4 as well as uh, f8 the next joint we are going to consider is uh, joint G. We are done with joint D. We go to joint G. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, joint G. Please keep on subscribing to our channel so that we take it to the next level and we make it the, the best structural engineering uh, channel that will ever exist. So please guys, subscribe to this channel of ours. Uh, remember to give us positive comments. All tell us what you think about uh, the course. And if at all it is helping you in one way or the other, please uh, tell us on the comment section. And you are going to motivate us to keep on working hard. So, joint G, we have a, a 6 kN vertical load. We have angle theta, angle theta, this joint D, joint E, joint F, joint B. Joint uh, E, we have a force F7. I mean member, uh, member GD, which we have found to be 0. We have a force at uh, member E G, member E G we have a force, and we are going to assume that that force is a tensile force, not compressive. Therefore, let's assume that the force F nine is a tensile force that is pulling joint G towards that direction. Um, on member G F we have a tensile force as well. On member G B we also have a tensile force. Now, we are going to begin with uh, resolving the forces vertically. And therefore, we go to resolving, resolving forces vertically 
and applying this principle of summation of all the vertical forces to be equal to zero. So resolving the forces uh, vertically, we are going to have F7 multiplied by the sine of this angle. Therefore, we have F7 multiplied by sine theta plus F9 multiplied by the sine of this angle. So F9 multiplied by sine theta is equal to this downward acting force of 6 kN. So that is going to be equal to 6. F7 is uh, 0 and therefore we are going to have F9 multiplied by the sine of angle theta and that angle is that 6.87 degrees that is going to be equal to 0 and therefore the value of uh, the force F9 is going to be 6 divided by sine 36.87 and that is going to give you 10 kilonewtons which is a positive force therefore you have 10 kilonewtons and that means that the force F9 is a tensile force just as we have indicated on member GE therefore F9 is equals 10 kilonewtons and it is a tensile force tensile force now after resolving the forces uh, vertically we are going to resolve the forces horizontally therefore resolving the forces horizontally and applying this principle of summation of all the horizontal forces to be equal to zero now Resolving the forces uh, horizontally, we are going to have um, F7, this F7 multiplied by the cos of that angle. So F7 times cos theta plus F6 plus um, F6. F6 is uh, this force on member GF. On member GF. That is our member 6 and therefore we have our force F6. So plus F6. That is going to be F9 multiplied by the cosine of this angle. Therefore that is going to be F9 multiplied by cos theta plus F10. F10 is uh, the force on member GB. That is our 10th member. So this is F10. 10 so plus f 10 the incendiatum f7 is 0 uh, f6 is um we had f6 being 16 kilo newtons therefore uh, 0 plus 16 that is 16 is equal to so f9 10 multiplied by the cos of uh, angle theta and angle theta is that 6.87 plus F10, plus F10. Now, 10 multiplied by cos that 6.87, that gives you 8 kilo newtons. Therefore, 16 is equals 8 plus F10. That means that we are going to have 16 minus 8, which is F10. And therefore, the value of the force uh, F10 is uh, 8 kilo newtons which in this case being a positive force that's going to be a tensile force meaning that it is pulling joint g good so we are done with the joint um, we are done with joint g and the final joint we are going to consider is going to be joint e since it is going to give us uh, the value of the force on this member EB and after that we are going to have the value of all the forces on all the members of this truss so we go to joint E we go to joint E so joint E we have the following members so we brought joint E here we're going to have 
the following members of joint E. This is a joint G. This is joint B. This is a joint D. This is joint E. And we have a force of 8 kilonewtons, a horizontal force of 8 kilonewtons at that point. And um, this is angle theta. That is angle theta. On joint G, E, that is the ninth member, F9 is 10 kilonewtons, and it is a tensile force. Therefore, it is pulling joint E, so that is F9. On joint, on member EB, we have, uh, uh, we have a force F11, since that is our member number 11. On joint DE, we have a force F4. We have a force F4, which is 8 kilonewtons. It is equivalent to 8 kilonewtons. So that is the details of joint E. Now, the same same uh, case applies to joint E. And we are going to begin with resolving forces. vertically resolving forces vertically and applying this principle summation of all the vertical forces being equal to being equal to zero so resolving the forces vertically we are going to have uh, f9 f9 multiplied by the sine of uh, this angle that is sine theta so f9 times sine theta plus f11 times this angle theta so plus f11 multiplied by sine theta that is going to be zero that is summation of all the vertical forces being equal to zero we have the value of f9 which is uh, 10 kilonewtons therefore we are going to have 10 multiplied by sine theta plus f11 multiplied by sine theta is equal to zero we take uh, 10 sine theta the other side of the equal sign therefore we are going to have f11 sine theta is equal to negative 10 multiplied by sine theta to get the value of f11 we are going to divide both sides by sine theta divide this side as well by sine theta they cancel out like that and we are going to have the value of f11 being negative 10 kilonewtons ignoring the negative sign uh, showing that that is a compressive force therefore the value of uh, f11 is 10 kilonewtons a compressive force compressing joint E. After resolving the forces uh, vertically, the next thing will be resolving the forces horizontally. Resolving the forces horizontally. F4 is going to be 8 kilonewtons. So uh, we are going to have F4 being equal to 8 kilonewtons which is a compressive force, compressive force. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we now have all the forces on all the members of this truss, and we can be able to fill them here. We have F1, this is a tensile F1, that is a compressive force. So compressing joint uh, A, as well as joint C. So we have a, a force of 5 kilonewtons. We have a force of 5 kilonewtons there. Um, when we come to this uh, member 2, member 2 we have 12 kilonewtons, a tensile force. Therefore, pulling joint A, pulling joint F. So here we have 12 kilonewtons. On member 3, we have 
a tensile force of 3 kN, therefore pulling joint C, pulling joint F, so that is a, a force of 5 kN on member CF, 5 kN. On member DF, on member DF, that is the force F5. Force F, uh, what? This was uh, 1, 2, 3, four, uh, 4, 5, yeah. Force F5, that one we had it as 0. Therefore, the force on that member is 0. F4, this is a compressive force of 8 kN. Therefore, it is compressing joint uh, C. It is also compressing joint uh, D. So, that is an 8 kN compressive force. Um, member 6, F6, six, 16 kilonewtons, a tensile force of 16 kilonewtons, therefore pulling joint F, pulling joint B, uh, that is 16 kilonewtons, 16, 16 kilonewtons, then F7, 0, therefore the force on this member is 0. The force on member EG, that is uh, 9, F9. F9, we have it as 10 kN, a tensile force. Therefore, pulling joint E there, pulling joint G there. And that is 10 kN. F10, F10, that is uh, 8 kN, a tensile force. Therefore, pulling joint G there, pulling joint B here. That is uh, 8 kilo newtons. And finally, F11. F11, that is a compressive uh, force of 10 kilo newtons. Therefore, compressing joint E there, compressing joint B here, that is 10 kilo newtons. So, we have the forces on all the members of this truss. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please, if you have liked it, remember to subscribe to this channel. Also hit the notification bell so that whenever we post a new video, you'll be the first person to be notified. And let's equip ourselves with structural engineering knowledge. See you in our next lesson.